Friday the 13th everyone. Uh, I decided to get right to this video because everything's fresh in my mind rather than do it tomorrow because I don't know if I'll have time. How can the Penguins come out to a 2-0 lead again and then have a 3-1 lead and lose by three goals You know, the things we talked about in the first video, from the first game, power play needed to be better. They were. People needed to keep moving. This time, two periods they kept moving. Not just one, they moved for two periods they kept moving. But again, come the third period, they stopped moving. It's almost like... I said in the first game it felt like the Penguins wanted the Flyers to quit. When they got the 3-0 lead, they were like, please quit. Please quit. Well, obviously they're not going to quit. Now you got a problem where no matter what lead you get, it's not going to matter. They have now had one, two, three... Or they've had the lead countless amounts of times in the first two games. The Flyers have led for, what, ten minutes of this series? And they've won both games. All this talk from the Penguins about, about dumping the puck in, about playing their game, about getting it deep and making the defenseman turn around, First period, they did it. Second period, they kind of did it. The third period, it was like there was a recording from FSN. They basically just kept saying, Penguins turn it over at the blue line. Penguins turn it over just inside the blue line. Why? Why are they passing the puck inside the blue line when they know and they've said it over and over and over we have to dump it. We have to make their defensemen turn around. I gotta give props to the Flyers. It sucks, but I do. They just don't change a thing. Last game, their coach said they dumped it in like 43 meaningful times, I think he said. Same thing this game. Exact same thing. And a lot of times the Penguins defensemen were pulling up so they wouldn't get hit. Play the puck. Take the hit. Move the puck out. Ben Lovejoy's turnover. Oh boy. I'd love to single him out, but I'm not going to. That whole defensive court was awful. Awful. When I first looked at it at the beginning of the year, I remember saying, I think this defensive core is the best one that we've had. Maybe ever. But as the seasons wore on, Especially in that third period, they looked like they wanted nothing to do with that game. There were times when the puck was laying inside the Penguins' blue line, where people would skate around it and nobody wanted it. Finally, there was one point where Latang had to take it and go the other way because three forwards skated by it like, nope, I don't want it. I said the Penguins would win in six, they're going to have to win four in a row. And a lot of people point back to uh, 09 when they won the two series on the way to the cup down 02. Well, both series, they lost the first two games on the road. It's so hard to lose the games at home, come back and win a series. 1995 96, Washington and Pittsburgh. Both games, Penguins jumped out to big leads on Peter Nedved goals. Both games, Capitals came back and won. Penguins went into Washington, won both those games, and won, then won the series. It's a little similar to that because both games in that series, 
the Penguins had leads and blew them. In both games in this series, the Penguins had leads and blew them. But both games, it seemed like in 96, that the team wasn't just quitting. And I'm not saying the Penguins are quitting, because I don't think the professional athletes don't quit. Especially hockey players. They just don't. But man, they look frustrated. They look like they don't want to be there. They look like they want the game to be over. They look like, they look like we have the lead. Can this just end? And that's not how you do it. You have to get the lead and you have to force them to get back into the game. You don't hand them a turnover when you just scored. Every time the Flyers scored tonight, the Penguins would answer. But then the Flyers would answer. So that's the first two games. My gut feeling now is my prediction is wrong. I, you know, I believe the Penguins are the better team when they feel like being the better team. And when things don't go their way, they just, they beg for the game to be over. They don't want to work till the end. They want it to be over. But it is 60 minutes long. And now, people say you got to play the full 60 minutes. The Flyers played 40 the other night and won. It's not playing the full 60 minutes. It's when you get the lead. Don't stop. And when the other team fights back, you don't stop. You don't stop doing what you're doing. Now, as good as the power play was, turnovers, shorthanded goals, two in the same game, terrible. They spent all this time fixing things like the power play at the last practice. Well, it got fixed. They won some face-offs. Still lost by three instead of one. The problem is as simple as playing the kind of hockey that they play. And they refuse to do it. And I have no, no idea why. I can't get in their heads. I don't know why they don't want to dump it in. I don't know why they want to try and make cross-ice passes inside the blue line with four guys in the flyer zone. Every person in Pittsburgh media thinks this series is over. Every one of them. You know, as a player, you block that out, I'm sure. But I don't know how they can feel like they have a... Just based on the way that they look after the Flyers came back again and made it 5-5, I don't know if they have the mental makeup to take a lead and let it... What if they blow another lead? What if they go into game three and they take a 2 nothing lead and the Flyers tie it at two? It'll break them up. They'll, they'll fall apart. I don't know why they don't have the mental makeup to overcome a team coming back on them. When the game's tied, it's not over. You have to want to get the next goal. Make them come back again. Make them keep coming back. And for a while they were doing it tonight. But once that fifth goal went in, they just... The crowd went into the th final period, I think, thinking that it was over. And they were just sitting there watching torture. They were tortured. I don't know what the solution is. I, could, I can't help you guys with that. I, I don't know if they do. The solution is really easy, and they know what it is, and they won't do it. So I don't know what the real solution is. When you know what you have to do, you say it to the media that you have to do this, and you still don't do it, that you're not going to do it. So how do you win? When you say, we need to dump the puck in and make their defensemen turn around, we need to go hit them, and then Paul Staggerwald says 15 times in a period, Penguins turn it over at the blue line again. Okay, you don't want to take it in. Don't tell people that you have to take it in. Either do it or don't, but don't tell people that that's what you have to do and then not do it. Again, props to the Flyers. 
they are absolutely outworking the penguins. They just won't change a thing they're doing. If the penguins don't change what they're doing, they're done. Done. I hope not. This is one of the most talented groups of uh, hockey players I've ever seen. And they're playing stubbornly and it's the most frustrating thing as a fan to watch when you're a fan of a professional team and you know what they should be doing more than they do. It's true. You can't tell me that's not true. Everybody in that arena knew what they should be doing and they weren't doing it. You can tell them a thousand times. Drill it into their heads and make them do it in practice, but until they do it in a game, they're done.